G'day, so we're further exploring the post-consumer transitioning. In today's episode, we're going to look at the circular economy uh, and the way how that we can really look at how this thing does not make any sense. Uh, And only makes sense, let's say, I'm going to qualify why this doesn't make sense, is that if you think the economy produces goods and services rather than a self that can be managed Okay, so that's the the separation or the fork in the road that we have to traverse in order for me to substantiate that the whole way of a circular economy, the way how it's touted, let's say, um, is just a form of marketing. But that marketing is ultimately what, what, what what's presupposed in order to spruik the virtues of a circular economy. Well, that's the consumer. That's that the economy produces goods and services and actually doesn't produce you as a as a self a marginal self so you can be managed in reference to the people that feel that they're going to chart your your uh, your future for you okay so when you're looking at at that kind of differentiation of the economy then what because you've got to th- this and the, the touchstone it's very easy to understand this is that you're the base you're you're the very you're the very product that's produced in order to substantiate the way how things are given now if you don't get that then when, what I'm going to talk about will just not make any sense because you've basically drink, drunk the Kool-Aid and you think the economy produces goods and services, but it fucking doesn't. It produces you. You're the product. You must know that you are the product. If you know through issues of data, let's say, so why is data a big deal now to profile you? Well, ultimately, we get an indication that we are the product. And so therefore, in order for any marketer, advertiser, government as well to understand what they've produced, ultimately, they they have to have have as much data around that to get a better indication of your proclivities. All right. But because the proclivities or your value is in reference to your wants that you can be credited. And so the issue here is, is that the economy, when you're talking about a circular economy, it presupposes people are reducible to the agency that they're credited as consumers. All right. So they can be managed to the way how uh, these people see fit. So a person is not given in these things because you've got to think that the circular economy is given within the paradigm of stakeholderism. So you have all stakeholders that are supposedly uh, have a stake in the future, but what's the future that they're staking? Well, it's the ascendancy of the consumer, but they're going to re-qualify the consumer through, say, maybe social credit or, say, authoritarian means or a way of rationing that's got nothing to do with what you do, but it's got to do with what they dictate. All right, so if you're looking at the transition from liberalism or classical liberalism and that what we would see is the neoliberal kind of order, you have to obviously sell grand narratives so you can get a buy-in for the aspiration, the spiritual aspiration that's percolating in modern life because the form of life is ultimately fails. It's failing, and so therefore you have to invest in intangibles to generate you know, ultimately what is just a, a diminishing return. And I always talk about this. So when you're looking at the circular economy, if you disregard the production process of the consumer, then what, what you'll do, you'll get sold on the legitimacy of the narratives that are, that are around that. So you're looking at the way how that, and there's merit to it, don't get me wrong, there's merits to it, but you've got to look at the denominator that this thing works off, which I always say. So sustainability never is framed through the issue of time, okay? Because what time's a resource, we would think everybody would presuppose it's just a, a dogma. All right, so in in any way of uh, looking at the economy, it produces goods and services. What does it take as a given? The time is a value, so it's a resource. But as I always say, it's a, re- a resource in reference to the finished good of you as a consumer. So the economic good that time becomes is a resource that's utilised to produce yourself yourself as a consumer now nobody produces you as a consumer you do it all right through the way you get sold on life through the existential arbitrage you'll simultaneously buy and sell yourself you'll invest yourself in roles you'll disregard basically that the consumer is not reducible to the agency that you're credited but the claim that you acquit yourself of the transcendental truth claim that time is a value so you've spiritualized time 
And as a result of that, you can only be you're orientated towards values or the the value of a narrative, but it doesn't have any existential basis because you can't ground it because you have to acquit yourself of a transcendentalism that you're yet to actually acknowledge is the case. You're beholden to a spiritual disease you are sold not to see. So when you get sold on the circular economy as as the way how it is now, what that what what happens? What's the opportunity cost? Is to understand that the economy produces you as the consumer that's the thing that you need to address if you don't if you get sold on the circular economy you're going to get sold on stakeholders you're going to get sold sold on a person reducible to the agency that they're credited in turn you are sanctioning managerialism as a paradigm that's all you're doing all right so if you think okay circular economy is about is giving incentives to reuse recycle uh, so therefore to not extract kind of like resources from the earth and so therefore to have a circular, um, you know, to have circular inputs, let's say. And so therefore you've got any waste and it doesn't matter what it is, can be used for, for value adds or not for value. So it's like the, the value chain is linked. So therefore it becomes a circle. And so if you if you hold out let's say that that's the way how you look at the economy is and so the circular nature of it think about the nature of a circular economy that's placed on a linear understanding of life how does that work all right so think of the context of what's the linear nature of our of our lives well if we've individualized time and you're on a bias journey that's linear you have certain conditions or certain say inflection points in your life that you have to like tick boxes on okay or that you're working to secure a supplement of time that's added on. The biggest supplement of time I've added on in your life is your retirement. So therefore you've linearized, you take dynamism out of your life because you don't credit yourself with creativity. Ultimately, this is what it is. And so therefore the creativity or the recreation is, is literally a substitute for the creation that you don't credit yourself with through the way how you get sold on life, not to see that. So what is what it is, there's a disavow of responsibility. So the only way how the circular economy can be sold as a paradigm is that it it's based itself upon the disavow responsibility of people giving and being given as a consumer. Because the disavow responsibility in that uh, context, well, a consumer is reducible to the agency that they're credited. So the want or their preferences in reference to goods and services. It's not in reference to the to the totalizing claim of, of, of a consumer when you're looking at the existential claim of time given as a value. As I always say, it's an existential totalitarianism. You have to acquit yourself of that truth claim. So how can you how can you set up what is a circular economy all right, which is meant to, supposedly meant to be sustainable, and yet the way how that life has been set out is linear. All right, and so therefore you can cycle. Of course you can, because think of the what happens there. You got the circular economy. Think of the the kind of infographic that you're probably familiar with. Where the circular economy is just like, all right, you got all these inputs. Now place that wheel out on your life and just move the wheel along. So let's say. Why? Why does how, how can you make sense of this? Well, let's say that you're. If we're talking about affluence, or the more money that you earn, the more that you spend. This is what happens. The more people earn, the more that they spend because their wants grow. Well, why would their wants grow? Or why would they they substitute for shit that they bought prior? So everything becomes a st- a, a placeholder. So a good becomes a placeholder. Yes. So the more that you earn, you can rarify. Your, your consumption so that circular nature legitimizes that because what you do is that you'll earn more and think okay the, the shit object that i bought i can buy a more rarefied one I, you're ultimately trying to appropriate creativity that's ultimately what you're trying to do because the rarefication ends in art ends in singular artifacts if you're looking at this thing along a, a spectrum anyway but if you think that you've got something that's a placeholder because now, because you di- didn't have the means at your disposal in order to get ultimately the thing that you want, so it's a placeholder that's waiting until your um, affluence grows, and so therefore you can afford it. So you substitute. So that circular nature doesn't delegitimize the substitutable activity of consumption, does it? No, of course it can't, because it doesn't. The understanding of sustainability, when you disregard the claim that's made on time, disregards the mimetic understanding of what drives consumption. The relationality reduced to want and the way how we show differentiation through the shit that we buy or supposedly now the values values that we espouse. 
So it doesn't it doesn't address that, does it? So if it doesn't address it, then you're not addressing consumption as a legitimized activity because it's driven by the relationality. And the reason why it's driven by the relationality is because people don't credit themselves with creativity because the economy supposedly produces goods and services and not the self that's given to, to the world marginally or the interest of that self. So if you're looking at at any any kind of narrative that comes to do with sustainability that doesn't address the principal resource think of sustainability along these lines or the, the the circular economy it deals with resources yes and you'd have to say yes of course it does so deal with the principal one all right the only one that matters which is time Think of the way how time's used within business. Think of the, your understanding of time now. Thinking of that time is valuable. It's valuable, like I've said. Well, this will seem this will jar because we work with this equivalence and we don't understand that that equivalence is actually concealing a claim that we that the only thing that we can do is acquit ourselves of it. Because if we give purpose to our lives and so therefore we invest in that val- that time does have a value, it doesn't delegitimize the totalizing claim of that value when it's given as an economic. Good or the means utilized to produce the form of life, as I always say. You can be sold on the purpose for your life that does not invalidate that, all right, because you'll be sold on your role and you, and ultimately the role, your vehicle, the way how the, of your career, role, job, whatever, becomes a vehicle for your aspirations and in turn can disregard the totalizing claim because you're sold on life the way how it's given. You actually, you've outsourced your ability to think about things in a way because you don't really, ultimately it's either you don't care, you don't give a fuck, or you're basically just, you're a, a you're, you're, you have had unavowed religiosity, and so therefore you, you take life on blind faith, or the faith of, that's been handed down to you, and you don't actually understand, actually, that it's just driven by faith. So when you, when you understand that, that input, the principal input of time, time being a resource or an economic good, all right, if time's an economic good, it's an economic good to produce something. So we have to think. You have to. That's the only thing you have to do to think that through. Why is it? What I right, think. Look along the lines of um, the difference between developed economies in inverted commas and what would be you know developing economies. What do you think the difference is there? It, the the difference is simply that 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 you're developing the form of life. All right, to develop a market economy or a consumer economy or a consumer market. That's really what you're looking at. You're looking at, okay, well, it's 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 it needs to be developed. The form of life needs to be developed because what you need to do is you need to delegitimize other ways of being and doing, and so therefore give more credence to the form of life that is transcendent, and so therefore ultimately what it does all values so if you're looking at your ancestry or like other institutions religious ones or whatever anything outside the market you need to reduce all of that into the lifetime value you've been given as a consumer so you can be managed and that's a simply that's the so a underdeveloped or emerging economy it's just that they're basically the form of life of the consumer is not has not been developed to the degree that it has in in what would be neoliberal the neoliberal order where basically you are you're given credit for your want that's all you're credited all right you don't create the world you've got this managerial cast of people these fucking parasites that it feel that they're going to set out life for you the way you see fit you're going to become disenchanted with politics because it's just because you're a resource all right why do you think you're a fucking resource because you produce yourself as such. You produce a form of life that enables your management. And so how do you delegitimize the 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 whole understanding of like the circular economy or well not you're not really delegitimizing the issue of the circular economy because you you're actually delegitimizing the understanding of what is the economy. And once you understand what and if you take that as the principal question that you're looking at because you, as I always say, that you've got to look at the principal product that our way of life produces. It produces the consumer. So understand that first. That's foundational. Then, you, then what you'll do is that you'll understand the circular economy in reference to that. And then you'll understand the substitutable H nature of consumption, what drives that. All right, and then if you understand that, it's a compensation for for that's ultimately all that um, economic ag- activity is compensating for a lack, and it's a, a lack to do with 
the, the form of life or the way how that basically the way of life does not enable people or, or our way of life does not enable people to contribute in a meaningful way beyond them buying shit as an economic multiplier so they can be managed on so it's or rentism so whether or not it's rentism from corporations or from government you know taxing you to the fucking hilt it's exactly the same they're just parasites fucking feeding off people to maintain the machine until you wise up to the fact and understand that actually the power of creation is that you have that power of creation. Now, one person having the power of creation, as I always say, is one person, if you think of the way how the most democratic movement that cannot be usurped by power-hungry fucks or warmongering cunts is basically is is the the power of the democratization of creativity well then you understand that because that you democratize creativity at de- by default sh- at, at, at at either delegitimizes institutions that are fed off that are there that are remnants and or it ennobles basic ones or you can just create new ones because ultimately if you are cre- crediting yourself with creativity and other people are doing it you're creating a world. If you're creating a world, these institutions don't basically have any standing in that world, do they? Because they're not. They're, they they are they are a remnant of a of a bygone era. They're, they're the crystallization of, of violence ultimately, especially if they're usurping uh, power and or or using dictatorial or mandates in order to get you to do things that you otherwise don't want to do or to to, le- to have legal theft as it were and to somehow rationalize that is that they're doing it for the greater good so the thing is is that this 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 way of looking at it means to say that you develop what are you developing you're developing the understanding of what the economy is to give context to any narrative that can be offered now if people talk about like you know agenda 2030 or any kind of un kind of thing or sustainability goals or all these other things all right that these people might have the best intentions and no doubt there's a lot of people do but what what's driving uh this is the is the impression the erroneous um is the is essentially the understanding of life is not whole all right so what what it what it actually does sanction is dogmatism because you're not looking at 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 the economy or what is so the economy is just economizing actions you got to look at anything that talks about the economy is just human action so drill it down into human action economizing action yeah versus what would be a creative action and there's a difference you understand that if you understand that the economy produces a form of life of the consumer, and that's because we economize, we practice economizing actions, then the threshold moment is to understand that, well, there's an opportunity cost, as I always say, to our economizing actions. So how do you unproduce yourself as the consumer? If that's the principal product, our way of life is produced. All right, That's our gift to the universe. I right? put it in these terms. We're, we're produced a form of life of the consumer, all right? and that's, that's, that's the only thing that we've come up with so far. All right, that's all, all our ingenuity, nothing else, because it doesn't matter what it is. If your form of life is transcendent to anything that a person says or anything that's produced on this planet, think of that. It's the lifetime value is you being reduced to a consumer. All right, it doesn't matter what else it is. It doesn't matter what a person says or whatever. It does not matter. It's a totalizing claim. Like I said, it's existential totalitarianism. If you don't address a totalizing claim made on life, then it, the way how things are given is not being addressed through the culture that would transcend it. So therefore, once you understand that there actually is an economi- um, opportunity cost to your economizing actions, the only way that you can understand that is that you understand, well, time is a resource, it's an economic good, and it's used to produce, the economy doesn't produce goods and services. The actual, the economy produces a form of life to sanction the way how things are given. All right, to sanction rentism and basically parasitism. So it's just one way of looking at a narrative that is offered for people that are maybe that are engaged in sustainability or, or want to care for the world, but then the way how it's framed, because it completely disregards the total of and claim made on time, means to say it's ultimately an impasse. It doesn't address anything. It sanctions, like I said, a worldview. And if you don't understand the way how that occurs, and the, so the foundational nature of the questions that I always ask, then you then this then the circular economy and the way how sustainability is framed 
will seem legitimate, but ultimately it's not because you're not looking at the principal product. And it's quite, and you only have to think, go back 100, 500 years ago, that's all you have to do. We weren't given as consumers, right? So just think of that. That's all you have to do. You have to just place yourself outside historical context to then to, then to understand the way how everything is framed, all right? And so if you disregard the primary frame, and then you've got to think, well, the frame is a consumer, but then you've got to think, well, okay, the frame is a consumer, yeah, I get that. But well then, okay, the, the it, consumerism hasn't just fallen from fucking from the heavens. It's 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 literally through the way how we act. So I always, I always say you could understand the way how that occurs. If you do that, you'll be given eyes to fucking see or ears to hear. Basically, whenever a person spruiks anything that relates to sustainability, circular economy, or any fucking agenda or anything else like that, because it's just one thing that's just um, sanctions authoritarianism and dogmatism ultimately you know, re- unavowed relig- religiosity and ultimately a bad faith that we live our lives by because ultimately you're not doing justice to your mother or to the earth when you when you have to acquit yourself of claim mate or mate on time it's a transcendental truth claim so it's basically beyond the earth yeah it's a religiosity it's like it's in the spiritual realm it, like it's kind of it's it's a, a perversion you're not dealing with basically grounding life down as to where it is just think of that Anyway, until next time. Cheers.